Metal roofing will fade over time, but how does that happen? How else do paint systems react as they age? Today on Q&A Mondays, I talk with some guests, including Rob Haddock from S5 and the Metal Roof Advisory Group about metal roof paint longevity, how the environment affects paint, paint components in their systems, as well as paint warranties. This episode has a ton of in-depth information, and you can jump to any of these topics in the video using the links in the description below. All this and more right now on the Metal Roofing Channel. Hi, I'm Thad Barnett. Welcome back to Q&A Monday here on the Metal Roofing Channel. I've got Julianne Calipa, our content writer, back with us, Adam Mazella from Sheffield, and I'm very excited to introduce our special guest today, Rob Haddock from S5 and the Metal Roof Advisory Group. Thanks for being on the show with us, Rob. Sure. Good morning. Glad to be with you. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about chalking and fading. And first, I want to ask you, Rob, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and your, your experience in the industry. Well, I started in the metal construction industry when I was about 17, working for my dad. And uh, at the ripe old age of 19, I started my own uh, contracting company, erecting metal buildings and facades and architectural metals and so on. And uh, I retired from that uh, in 1990 and went into full-time consulting uh, to the industry. And then uh, I also began inventing things and that wound up being a company called uh, Metal Roof Innovations, which owns the trademark S5. And S5 is a product line uh, of, of attachment, unique attachment methods to mount things to metal roofs. So I still have a consulting practice. I do a fair amount of, uh, of educational things as well as forensic things. Um, and I have another company that's a product commercialization and distribution company. So with your wide range of experience, we thought, you know, it would be really good to have you on the show um, and really educate our users about this topic specifically. Um, so let's talk about chalking and fading. Can you give me kind of an intro to the topic um, in a broad sense? What is chalking and fading? Well, obviously, we're talking about paint here. And paint has several failure modes, if you want to call them that. Um, one of those, the three primary failure modes of paint, or let's just say degradation modes of paint, uh, are that the color changes over time. And um, that's commonly referred to as fade, although um, a, more, a more appropriate term is just color change. And in addition to that, the, um, the paint resin um, degrades over time, and we refer to that as chalk. The third uh, mode of potential failure is paint adhesion. And so that, that, that gets into, you know, uh, cracking and chipping and blistering and those sorts of things. Pretty rare that that latter mode of, of failure is pretty rare and would indicate that something went wrong in the painting process. So the two that you're um, interested in here this morning, I think, are the remaining two modes of failure or paint degradation, fade, which affects the pigment, and chalk, which affects the resin. So in regards to factory paint finishes, how long do they usually last on uh, metal panels? Well, liquid paint is made up of three components. Cured paint is only made up of two. So how long it lasts depends on the makeup uh, of the paint used, the, the type and integrity of, the, of its two primary components, pigment and resin. And it depends on the specific pigments used and their chemistry, whether they're organic or inorganic pigments, and their individual color stability, because some colors are more stable than others. And some colors are not available in inorganic pigments or ceramic pigments, which generally are more stable pigments. Um, but certain colors are not available in, in that pigment category. 
And so oftentimes the two are mixed in organic and organic, and the organic pigments tend to be a little less stable. So when you ask the question, uh, how long will paint last? It depends upon all those things. And it also depends on the environment, their exposure. Right. Can you talk about like, like what we tell our customers what, about the paint and how long it's gonna last? Yeah, so when, when we get an inquiry, I usually say, you know, when we're talking chalk and fade, I like to use the analogy of, you know, you go to the store, you buy two shirts, you buy a, you know, a nice, you know, bright red shirt and you go to the store and buy a, you know, a gray shirt. And over time you wash it and you wash it and you wash it and that gray doesn't change a whole lot, but that bright red shirt tends to wear out, you know, the more you wear it out in the sun, the more it's get washed, it kind of fades out over time. And that's kind of the analogy I use. I mean, if you if you goes hand in hand with the organic pigments, which um, you know not not solely uh, are bright colors organic, but uh, the the brighter colors tend to be organic pigments. You know, the blues, uh, the reds, things like that. Where the more the earth tones um, generally hold on to their their color a little bit better. You know, as long as they're not too dark. Right, I agree. And, and an ingredient of almost any color is black. And black provides pretty stable UV resistance. So you're right, a, a red pigment is, is not available in a ceramic um, formulation. So red pigments are organic and they tend to fade more, more quickly than other colors. And then you can also, of course, we think of fade. Um, it's, it's some color turning to white over time. That's why a more appropriate term is really color change, because when you mix two primary colors, like blue and yellow, you now have green. Well, the yellow is a very stable pigment. The blue is not as stable. So over time, when that roof fades, it will become more yellow than blue. So it's actually a, a lateral color change as well as uh, over time turning white. And, and to add to that, you know, paint system, uh, paint type certainly adds to how long it'll remain stable or how long it'll it'll maintain its color integrity. I mean, you kind of, the spectrum we use when a customer's saying, hey, I'm, I'm thinking of this, that, or the other, you know, we usually say, hey, the Kynars are going to last longer, you know, next level down for products that we offer would be the uh, silicon modified polyesters, and then the next level down would be the polyesters, and there's a whole grouping of other paints that, you know, plastisols and things like that, that yeah. uh, certainly don't hold the, the color integrity as long as a Kynar would. And we have a we have a Q&A episode with Rick Afton and Jeff Alexander from Valspar, uh, which we'll link to you if you want to check out more about Kynar, PVDF, and SMP as well. Right. Now, when you throw out those names, what you're doing is calling out the resin type. So when we when we refer to to paint as an acrylic or a, or a polyester or a siliconized polyester, we're really talking about its resin. It's the job of the pigment to hide the primer and to add color. It's the job of the resin to surround the pigment particles and protect them from environmental pollutants and so on. So as paint degrades over time, uh, the resin is going away and that's an, an oxidation process that we call chalking. And as it does, the pigment part of particles are also being lost. The, the film is being reduced in, in thickness. And in addition to that, then the, the pigment particles also change color gradually. So the two main components of a paint system are pigment and resin. How does, um, how does the environment affect each one of those individually? Well, the enemies of both are uh, heat, light, and moisture. 
And so the, the, and those are the, the three things along with environmental pollutants that can accelerate the degradation process of paint. Um, so it depends upon how much of those, uh, of those factors are involved with the exposure. Um, of course, in this case, you know, if you were to take that, that paint and put it indoors where it's not exposed to that moisture, it, it may have uh, two or three times or even four times better performance because it's not subjected to those things. Of course, we're putting those paint films on roofs, so they're very subject to those things. So the, the hotter the climate, uh, the more moisture in the air, um, and the stronger the UV, the more rapidly the paint will degrade over time. Of course, we're talking years and years for premium paints. Adam mentioned uh, Kynar, which is a trade name uh, for polyvanillidine fluoride, uh, which was a resin type developed by Penwell years and years ago. Uh, and that really is the state of the art, as well as the standard of the commercial roof industry. Uh, and it's gaining popularity uh, in, in residential applications as well. So do you guys see um, a lot of buildings being or using um, less bright colors in high heat, high UV environments? Um, not necessarily. Um, people tend to choose the color that people want to choose. But Adam was talking a little bit ago about red being less stable. So generally, uh, a, a, a paint supplier or a metal panel company or a coil supplier um, will collaborate on some of these scientific facts and they won't offer a bright fire engine red. It may just not be available um, because they know that that color is, is somewhat unstable and they can't warrant its performance the same as they would some other color. So what they tend to do is tone it down with, uh, with, with black and, and, and other colors to kind of take, take that fire engine pure clean red and, and tone it down to more of an earth color and, and it will perform much better because right. of that. Yeah, and it, it's, it's agree with Rob. People don't really shy away. Um, and if you look at the restaurant industry, um, grocery stores, a lot of them are using that bright red. Some of, uh, some of these companies have uh, kind of moved towards using what's a three-coat Kynar. And all it is is your, your I don't want to say all it is, but it's your typical Kynar finish, but they put a clear coat uh, PVDF over top. And that's going to help a little bit mm -hmm. with the color integrity over time. Um, but that's not really a, a really cost-effective option, especially for the average consumer. Yeah. Um, so I, I think letting people know that, hey, the, the uh, chalk and fade warranty varies for these brighter colors is a way of showing it. You know, the other thing is, is you know, looking at where your building's located. You know, if it's got a lot of shade on a south-phasing exposure, uh, you know, or if, or if the, the front of the building is a north-facing exposure and doesn't get the same UV and direct light that uh, the other side of the building might get. Other factors to, to kind of look at when it right. comes to that, too. So. If you have multiple roof planes on the, same, on the same building or even on separate buildings on the same site, and you face one of those roof planes west or north or face one north and one south, um, you're going to, you're going to see a significant difference, you know, after, after, after 20 years or whatever, right. you know, how much those paints have, have faded, uh, just because UV is, you know, is, is the worst as far as, um, uh, pigment degradation. So we actually wanted to go back kind of to the, to the resin and the pigment. And we wanted to talk about how those two things wear out. Well, over, over time, I mean, it depends what you mean exactly by wear out. Um, so the first case might be that the 
film just completely wears away, which eventually it will do, leaving uh, exposed bare metal. Um, the, the film thickness is being reduced as those two components, the pigment and the resin, degrade over time. They oxidize, they wash off. And, and what's happening is the film thickness is being reduced. And eventually it gets reduced to nothing over, over many years. Um, and then the bare metal will be exposed. So that's one form of wearing out. But normally the color change characteristic becomes objectionable before that happens. So that may, that may take, I mean, I've, I've seen that happen after 40 years or more that the paint film, and those are really on, on lower cost resin types. Uh, some, of the, some of the early polyesters from 40 years ago I see washing off roofs now and exposing bare metal uh, 40 and even 50 years with the higher grade paints like the Kynar paints that probably won't happen for 60 or 70 years. And before that happens, the paint is going to fade to intolerable levels. So that's another way it, it wears out is when it just becomes intolerable. The owner says my, my roof is, my blue roof is completely bleached out now. Got to do something. That's end of life for the paint. And of course, that's somewhat discretionary as well. I mean, what's acceptable to one person, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, as they say, what's acceptable to one may not be acceptable to another. And that presents an interesting question too. Uh, when the paint wears out, that film wears out, um, does that metal become more subject to corrosion? No, it's actually, that's actually a misconception that paint contributes, at least significantly contributes to corrosion protection. Um, these are all thin film paints. So the, the finished film thickness is, is about a mil. It's used, and a mil is a thousandth of an inch. So you know, that's about a quarter the thickness of a human hair. So these paint films are quite thin Wow. And because of that, they are moisture permeable, some more than others. Uh, but it's a, it's a misconception, really, that we paint a roof for corrosion protection. We paint roofs to make them pretty. And because moisture can permeate the paint film, um, the underlying substrate is, could be potentially subject to corrosion. That's why we always paint over a metallic coating. And, and of course, the preferred metallic coating in general these days uh, is 55% is aluminum zinc, a trade name Galvalume or Zincalume. It goes by other trade names. But that metallic coating is providing the corrosion protection to the base steel beneath. Um, so we never it's never a question of should we paint or should we use a metallic coating to protect the steel. It's the job of the metallic coating to protect the steel. The paint is to hide it all and make it pretty. And, and building off that, I mean, I've, I've seen roofs that have failed. Um, you'll see it right in the middle of the panel, maybe a handful of spots on a project. If you see a painted roof and you see a rust spot kind of in between, usually that panel was scratched at some point in the life of it, whether it was in the manufacturing process, the installation process, and it wouldn't have just scratched the paint. Uh, the scratch would have been deep enough to gouge that coating that, that mm -hmm. Rob's talking about. Right. And over time, that will eventually fail. Um, and that's not a paint issue. Um, that's really a scratch issue or a material handling issue. And it's all things that could have happened over time. I mean, you, you never know. Somebody could have, a branch could have fallen, scratched the roof um, while it's been installed. I mean, things happen. You know, weather happens, nature happens. Um, so. so the coating protects the metal and the paint is just for the look. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you talk more about the warranties that either we offer or that are offered for the paint? Sure. 
So our warranty is really an extension of what the paint manufacturer uh, does. We, we use Valspar slash Sherwin-Williams. Yeah. Um, and they, it's really, we're taking their warranty and extending it to the building owner, homeowner. Um, and it's really a combination of the paint, the metal, and the, uh, the adhesion, so the coater. Okay. So it's really a combination of all three things that we're extending to them. But since we're talking specifically paint today, I'll try to focus on them. But when you see a 40-year warranty, a 30-year warranty, whatever it might be, it's really read the fine print. Typically, these lengthy warranties pertain specifically to coating adhesion. So that's crack, peel, chip on the coating. Okay. Um, if you look at the fine print specifically to Kynar warranties, those usually range from 20 to 30 years, and even some of the brighter colors that Rob and I were talking about earlier may not even be that long. Okay. Um, so when you're talking a warranty, um, um, you're really talking about film adhesion and that paint staying on there. And, you know, chalk and fade is, is it's, it's objective, but at the end of the day, you know, what might be completely objective when you're talking about a hunter unit in, in change of that color, you know, that building owner might not be okay with five hunter units where a warranty says that's perfectly acceptable. Right. Well, right. In, in order for a paint manufacturer to warrant um, color change fade or, um, or, or chalking characteristics, those things have to be able to be measured. Uh, because th there, there's, there's no such thing as paint that won't fade or chalk. That hasn't been invented yet. It's only a question of how, uh, how severely that process takes place over some given period of time. That's why a warranty will always have a term, 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, whatever it is. Um, but it will also specify in units of measurement the color change or the chalk. And in the case of uh, color change that we've been calling fade, uh, one unit of fade is the slightest amount of fade. And when I'm saying unit, they're measured, fade is measured in NBS or Delta E hunter units. Um, they're really the same thing. NBS is National Bureau of Standards. So one unit of fade is the slightest amount of color change that would be perceptible to a well-trained eye. Uh, most lay people wouldn't notice one unit of fade. Um, so uh, the warranty language will say uh, that the paint won't fade a certain number of NBS units over the, the term of the warranty. Uh, for Kynar paints, uh, those specified units are normally five. So five units of fade would be perceptible, uh, but not highly objectionable. And of course, remember if the fade is uniform, your, your eye doesn't pick up that color change. You'd have to put the original right next to uh, the aged material to, to appreciate the difference. And of course, we're not ever doing that really. Uh, so anyway, uh, warranties will always specify a number of units of fade. Um, and as far as chalk is concerned, it's a scale of one to 10. Uh, and, and now uh, 10 units is the best. So that's new paint. And most premium warranties, premium paint warranties uh, will limit the chalk to a level of eight within the warranty period. Now, take note, somebody that is clever at writing warranties can say, well, uh, the, the, you know, this, this warranty assures that your roof won't fade beyond 20 NBS units or 25 or 30. And that is to say that your, that your red roof could turn almost as white as a sheet within the warranty period. <laughs> So you want to you want to read that warranty language. Yeah, and then typical standards with most of the paint manufacturers as it relates to PVDF, um, like Rob mentioned, is a Hunter of Five and a, a 
chalk of eight. So we can put uh, some links in the video to explain that further. And yeah. it's really technical stuff. Um, and we have some graphics and illustrations on, on some of our blogs that elaborate and get into that in uh, more detail as well. Yeah. Um, yes, if you want more, uh, you can go to the MCAT website, that's metalconstruction.org, uh, and go find the technical tab and roofing and uh, look for a document called Metal Roofing from A to Z, Part 3. That's a seven-part uh, document, uh, and, it, and it's high resolution and good graphics in there. Um, and you can find that on the MCA website. It's a free download. Yep, we'll go ahead and link that in the uh, video description um, for everyone to check out. Uh, well, Rob, I definitely wanted to thank you very much for coming on the show. Um, there's a lot of good information here, and like I said, we'll, we'll be linking some uh, articles in the description and, and check out our blog. Uh, Julianne has definitely. some, some yes. blog articles <laughs> on this subject as well. Uh, subscribe to the Metal Roofing channel. Comment below with any questions to be answered on future episodes of Q&A Mondays. Anything else, like I said, check out Sheffield Metals online, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank Rob. you. Oh, Rob. Thanks, Rob.